Hey guys, it's been a minute and in today's video, I want to talk about something that really caught my attention while I was browsing through Twitter. And what really caught my attention was a tweet about somebody who was sharing tips for new software developers in order to become much better programmers in the long term. After reading the tweet, I thought that it would make for a great video to actually talk about those tips and add a few tips of my own for you guys in order to just become much better programmers in the long term. And the tips aren't really meant for just new software developers, but are also meant for software developers that are already in the field and you can use these tips in order to just become much better programmers in general and even I myself right now I'm currently using most of those tips to just become a much better programmer in general every day so um, if that sounds interesting let's get started So tip number one. Tip number one is to pair program and collaborate a lot. So there's this code by Martin Fowler that states that um, any fool can write code that a computer can understand, but only a good programmer writes code that people can understand. And this couldn't be further from the truth. Code enables you to communicate with the computer. But when you write that code, you also want that code to be also be understood by humans as well. Um, some people actually fail to understand this, especially those that write legacy code. When you write legacy code, you want a program that other people can understand when they have to maintain that program. Some people that actually write legacy code always fail to understand this. You don't want to write code because it looks great on screen or it looks pretty nice or it looks much more efficient or whatever. Even though it looks much more efficient, you want to find the most efficient way that other people can also understand. And every time, if you write legacy code, write code that people can understand. Jeez, I can't stress that enough. Um, say I'm looking to maybe update a certain feature on a program and when I'm trying to update that feature, the code doesn't make sense because the person who wrote that code didn't make sense. They didn't put any comments or, okay, comments, that's another case, but legacy code you want it to be understandable so that's the great thing about collaboration collaboration teaches you how to write code that other people can understand um when you write a program that nobody understands it's a great way for them to come and tell you hey your code didn't make any sense right and same thing applies for you as well if people write a program that you can't really understand it's a great way for you to go up to them and say hey i don't understand what's this and then they'll, they'll also just learn how to actually write programs that other people can understand usually however when it comes to collaboration you find that most people actually plan out their program and they actually prepare for certain things say for instance you're going to be using react right for your program whatever it is that you're building right you're going to be using react you find that some people actually use functional components and if you find that four out of five of you guys actually know functional components and that fifth person doesn't know functional components it's a great way to actually teach that person um, what most react js what most react users are actually using and that's the great thing about um, collaboration however usually some developers are actually that much good in, in being able to collaborate with other people that they already know the practices that are most effective for actually working with other developers so if you learn this it will really save you a lot a lot 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 much time um yeah so if you really learn how to actually collaborate and work with other people it will save you a whole lot of time from actually busy planning down how you actually gonna do anything so um it's a great skill and it will help you down a lot it will help you it's a great skill and it will help you a lot down the line um another great thing about being able to collaborate um with um, pair programming is that it actually teaches you how to open source a lot because open sourcing usually involves collaborating with other people and it's a great thing i mean say you want to use a program and you've actually been a collaborator of that program i mean there isn't a much bigger flex than that so yeah, that's a great thing about actually uh, collaborating so open sourcing is a great thing to do and if you're actually new to programming i would really advise that you really really do um, um open source a lot and actually add a few things to other people's programs github is a great tool that you can actually use to actually be able to collaborate with other people online and um, you can actually just find find anything that picks your interest and just just try and add something to that program if you see anything necessary if there are little bugs or anything like that try and fix those bugs and you'll basically become a much better programmer over time
Okay, so tip number two. Tip number two is the learning never stops. Um, I can't stress this enough. In the world of education, where everything is changing super fast, especially technology, some technologies die and some technologies are born. You, you want to be able to keep up with those changes and actually adapt much faster and much more efficiently. Um, you don't necessarily have to learn every new stack that comes out, but you want to be able to keep up with the trend and be able to know what's trending right now and be able to adapt to that. Most people just think that um, after you learn a certain stack, that's it. Um, you're done, you're set for life, and you're just gonna go into school and uh, go into work, and that's it, it's done for life. No, the reality is the changes keep on happening and you have to keep up with the learning. Don't learn everything that comes out. Although it's sometimes it's highly advised, sometimes I would advise that you actually learn the basics so that if the technology is necessary for you to use it, then you don't have to start from 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 you don't have to start to start from the beginning and just build everything from this from scratch so tip number 2 tip number 2 is enjoy code reviews so when it comes to code reviews always have an open mind and learn from others and take feedback and use that feedback as a way to grow and become a much better programmer code reviews are also a great way to actually mentor new developers. So this is a great thing about code reviews. Code reviews aren't only done by senior developers. They are also done by junior developers as well. Um, as we all know, knowledge knows no bounds. You, you can see something that a senior developer can't see and same thing applies to them as well. A senior developer can't see something that you can see, right? So which is why code reviews, you must enjoy code reviews and always learn from what your seniors tell you or what somebody who, or whatever it is that another software developer tells you just learn from it and next tip is you don't have to learn everything or you don't have to know everything i'm guilty of this and i'm guilty of this at one point i actually wanted to learn almost everything that was coming out and i learned java i learned swift i learned python i learned um, JavaScript, I learned everything that caught my eye and at one point I was pretty close to learning Ruby as well. Uh, the reality is you don't have to actually know everything. Same thing applies with applying for a job. When you're applying for a new job, for a job as a software developer, you don't necessarily have to meet the job criteria 100%. Being able to meet the job criteria by maybe roughly 80% is pretty good enough. Okay, depending on what skill it is. So usually what I would do is um, I look at the project that I actually want to build and I learn what I need for that project. Um, so don't try and master, okay, every single piece that you can use to build that program. If you want to build an Android app, choose one, Java or Kotlin, which one is it, right? If you want to build this, uh, an iOS app, choose one, which one is it? Swift or Objective-C? Okay, although Objective-C right now is uh, super outdated, so I would rather go with Swift right now. And then if you want to build websites, right, um, and you're looking for a framework, um, so are you either going to go with Vue, React, or, or Angular? Choose one. Don't just go, okay, you know what, I'm going to learn React. Uh, if React doesn't really, if I don't really like React, then I'll go for Vue, and then chances I won't like Vue as well. I just want to master all of them. That's not a good approach. Just learn one, use that, and if you apply for a new job and they require Vue, then you can adapt from there. So tip number five. Tip number five is document everything. Programming can get a little complicated at times and so are the problems that come with it. So, And being able to take pretty good notes can take you a long way. Um, I can't stress enough how many times I've actually solved the problem at one point and couldn't remember the solution as to how I actually solved that problem. But if I had actually taken notes or, or, or written something about it of how I actually solved that problem, I wouldn't be having to stress about it anymore, right? So, which is why I use Notion. When I'm basically working with a new project, right? I'll create a new page for that project. And then within that project, I'll have sub pages as well, where I literally document every feature. Okay, not, not every single thing, but like the small things, 
those small problems where I'm just like, oh, okay, you know what? This problem can actually result to maybe this problem and then maybe that problem will just help you create a new feature for some reason. So being able to write down those small things can actually take you a long way. And you also wanna be able to take notes um, from maybe when your project manager is speaking. Like for instance, recently when we're actually working from home, right? Um, being able to take those small notes will go a long way. Usually your project manager is not always there. You might send him an email right now and he only answers five hours from there. And you actually wanted the answer right there and there. And if he's gonna take 20 hours to answer you, you would have been much better off if you find that he actually spoke about that thing and you actually wrote notes about it. So take pretty good notes and document everything. For instance, I'm actually documenting everything right now. And so yeah, um, document everything and you're gonna enjoy it, honestly. Um, I'm actually using this platform also as a way to actually document everything from where I'm starting and to where I'll be in the future down the line. Um, I wanna look back at these videos and just be like, whoa, that was really cringe, <laughs> you know, and actually laugh about it down the line. Um, so yeah, um, so document a lot. So tip number six, tip number six is mentor others. Um, so there's this great quote, I can't remember it word for word, but it says, you learn more by teaching others. So, so basically, when it comes to mentoring others, you don't necessarily have to be the best of the best in order to teach others. You can actually learn something today and actually be able to teach the other person tomorrow. Like for instance, this video is a great example of that. Um, just before yesterday, um, I had not known certain things that would actually help new developers, right? And only if I had these tips before I started programming as a new developer, then I would have been a much better programmer in just a matter of months, right? I would have been just a much better developer in a matter of months. So yeah, long term, um, just be just mentor others and it will benefit you and also benefit the other person. So it's a win-win for everyone. So, okay, so tip number seven is just an added bonus. Um, and that tip is the keep up the passion and be consistent. Um, programming is not easy. So more often than not, you will encounter bugs there will be long working hours. You will you will be looking at other people's code and the code won't make sense. Um, so you will encounter undocumented code. You won't understand what's happening. You'll be stressed out. Your brain will literally be pumping and you'll be furious. And the reality is if that does not get you excited or at least a little bit of excitement that you, you know, you actually want to do programming, um, that's going to be a problem long term because if you want to do programming, programming requires passion and it requires you to be able to just sit out on a keyboard for long hours and just sit there and enjoy yourself. And if you're not able to do that, then um, it means it's probably going to be boring for you. And if it's boring for you, then it's probably not what I think you should be taking if you're not able to sit down on a keyboard for very long hours at least maybe be able to sit on a keyboard for at least maybe two hours. Um, if you find that you, you can only sit on a keyboard for like literally 10 minutes and you're already bored or 20 minutes and you're already bored, then I don't think programming is really for you. As for me, right? When I think of myself literally sitting at the keyboard for roughly four hours or five hours, it literally, geez, it gets me going, honestly. I, I get motivated. Okay, not motivated, but I feel I feel a certain type of thrill. Like I feel I feel I feel I feel a certain type of thrill, and I feel excited, you know, to just sit at sit at my table and actually just put on my headphones or my earphones and keep at it and just code for five hours. Honestly, oh jeez, it's amazing. Honestly, um, it's one of the best things I actually like. Uh, actually, I wouldn't mind actually just sitting at the computer for like ten hours. 10 hours is a bit of a stretch. I'd be, my back would be so up to that. But yeah, um, so it needs passion and passion is the key. So actually being able to, okay, passion and consistent and consistent, uh, passion and consistency are the key to actually being able to succeed in programming and also being persistent. So being passionate and being consistent are the keys to actually being a successful programmer or 
a much better program in general. So if you've managed to make it down to this side of the video, then I'm very grateful and thank you very much. And if you really enjoyed the video, then I don't know, maybe you can just hit the like button if you like, you know, it's free. Otherwise, thank you and see you on my next video. Boop, boop, boop.